Hey there and welcome back. Today we're going to be swabbing some makeup brushes on agar agar to see what they grow and I will be doing a casual get ready with me talking to you about why I want to do this. Now I don't think I'm the worst when it comes to cleaning my makeup brushes but I am far from the best. I usually wait around seven days of actual use on the makeup brushes and then I give them a deep clean. However as you know I have extremely oily and acne prone skin and the number one contributor to my own breakouts that I do is putting dirty makeup Makeup brushes on my face. So this experiment as a whole is really just as a group being disgusted by the state of my makeup brushes and maybe this isn't the best thing to put on the internet but if anyone watches this video and is like I'm going to wash my makeup brushes right now I'll consider it a success. I've just finished putting on my last steps of skincare. I'm using the Calming Day Moisturizer from No Beauty and topping off with two finger lengths of Dr. G's Medi UV Ultra Sun SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 plus. A fun fact of this product is my friend told me that the Korean military uses it and if it's good enough for the Korean military in order to spend some government money on it, it's good enough for me. There are a lot of variables that I've thought of that I'm not controlling for in this agar agar experiment. I'm not controlling for synthetic versus natural bristles. I'm not controlling for age of the makeup or age of the brush. I'm not controlling for if blush is inherently more germy than eyeshadow. What I wanted to do with this video was just create a baseline for us to be grossed out about and then maybe as a community we can come together and see what the next set of petri dishes should be controlling for. Does that sound good? Leave your suggestions in the comments below and I'll have a pinned comment with the things that I've already thought about. Another thing that I wanted to do was actually use these agar, agar plates on different brush cleaning methods to see which ones were the most effective in rendering, you know, brushes cleanly. Because after you wash them once, are there a bunch of unseen microorganisms that manage to survive your brush cleansing? Maybe. Probably. And I want to see it grow on the agar agar plate. I hope you don't mind this more casual tone. I just wanted to, you know, show you that I'm actually using these brushes that I'm swiping on the agar on my face. One last time. This is like my max in terms of like letting the brushes linger on my skin. Hey there, it is Editing Justine and I stopped on this very flattering frame to let you know the rest of the get ready with me is a bit of a fever dream. So if you want to skip through that and get straight to the experiment, I'll have a timestamp for you below. But if you want to see a woman in crisis put on makeup, keep watching. <laughs> and I also wanted to show you how uneven my eyebrows are. No, I didn't draw them on that uneven. They are, my, my face is uneven. I'm like, what am I doing? I don't know. Do I describe it? Do I do the thing where I hold it up like this? I don't know. Generally, when I do my makeup, I like to start with my base and then I add in a little bit of a highlight D -d 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 -d, to hopefully distract from my completely uneven eyebrows. Da 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 da. I am going to eat dinner with my sister later tonight. And sometimes you just want to look dolled up, you know, even if you're just going to see your, your sister. Cause like life's too short, you know. You gotta look hot for each other. Gotta look hot for each other. I got this from Korea. It is a glitter bomb. I think it just adds like really nice dimension to the eye. Oh god. Oh god, I put I put the glitter straight in my eyebrow. That's cool. That's cool. That is the glitter look. The look. I'm doing this all out of order because I'm being videotaped and somehow that. <laughs> makes me feel not normal. So I'm just gonna give myself a little bit more definition with these these little brushes. And I, I feel like my face is so tiny it really helps to use smaller brushes to contour and stuff. And that's like something that I only learned like yesterday. So when I was when I was a young boy, I was just going around with like a dark highlight and just being like this is hot. My face is chiseled, but then it just being like a brown stripe on my face and I'm like, that's how it's supposed to look. So I'm gonna try and contour my nose. This is something that I've only started doing recently so I'm not very good at it. I'm gonna be handsome Squidward and I know it. 
Again, I find like a super teeny tiny brush with like this helps because if you mess up on this, you kind of mess up a super teeny tiny amount. I don't know. But then I take my other brush and I go back and blend it a little. But then I don't know how people blend because I just like blend it so you can't see it anymore. So then I'm just like, what, what was the, even the point of the contour? Is that better? Does my nose look more contoured? I, <laughs> I feel like I contoured it like... Like, uh, uh, am I? My head is straight up. Yeah, my nose is crooked. Okay, good to know. Good to know. I feel like I only learned recently I'm not supposed to put blush like on the apples of my cheeks, but like more kind of like around the face. Again, all the makeup girls can freaking roast me in the chat, but like hopefully it's okay. And because my face is so freaking uneven I usually take a big brush like this and I kind of take a translucent powder and like swipe it all over my face and I know I could bake I sometimes bake but I do this more for blending everything so I don't look super terrible with like really harsh lines and that is the look I don't know how much didn't record, but I have a feeling it wasn't a very good get ready with me. The only thing that I really wanted to show you through all of that was that these brushes did touch my face and I achieved this look with them. I am going to do a quick roll call of all the things that we're gonna be swapping. A Real Techniques makeup sponge, the Real Techniques blush brush with synthetic bristles, the Real Techniques setting brush with synthetic bristles, the Reefer 01 eyeshadow brush with natural bristles, the Sephora Pro eyebrow brush with synthetic bristles, Shantakai's eye perfector with natural bristles, Hakuhodo X Sephora's highlighter brush with natural bristles, Elf's professional blending eye brush that has synthetic bristles, this random little brush that I've had forever that is natural bristles and another random little brush that I've had forever with synthetic bristles. Okay, so this is how I'm gonna swab everything. Two of the agar plates from Amazon actually started growing stuff before I even opened the packaging. So I assume they weren't sterile, but nothing else has started growing anything. And I've been sitting on these plates for a while. So again, I assume that they're sterile, but for the sake of control, I'm just gonna leave this one unswabbed and see how the rest grow in comparison to that. Again, so many disclaimers. There are so many variables that I haven't accounted for. This is just for fun for all of us. So let's just start swabbing here and hope for the best. I'm using a Lurio Bertani agar plate, which is a nutrient-rich media commonly used to culture non-picky bacteria in a lab, instead of a blood agar, which as you can tell from the name, usually has sheep's blood in it to grow more picky pathogen, like Haemophilus influenzae, Streptococcus pneumoniae, and Neisseria species. After all, we're in the middle of the great core, if you will, and I don't want to create a localized biohazard just inside my house. Determining what is actually growing on the plates is a little bit harder, and quite frankly, something that I wouldn't be able to do with confidence. To begin basic identification, you need to take a look at form, what the colony looks like from the top down, elevation, what the colony looks like from the side, and margin, what the edges of the colony look like. In addition to making some general observations about the colony's surface, as well as further exclusionary testing. 10 seconds later. This is day one. Here's what they look like with my awkward handwriting. See you in the next one. Day two. Reefer eyeshadow brush, the contour nose brush and the sponge, my highlighter and blush, as well as the translucent powder brush have all started growing. And of course, here's our control, but the growth is very light. So I'm interested in what happens after. All right, bye. Day three. Okay, so in addition to some white, kind of almost like slimy white head on your skin type growth, we have some pink dots here and they're pretty uniform everywhere except for my eyebrow brush. So that makes me feel slightly better about it. And of course the control is still plain. Day four. Okay, so we are getting some different 
textures and colors going on here. This is day four. The little white head-like growths are still growing. The pink ones are growing larger. There's some yellow ones showing up now. There's also a fuzzy white dot and everything seems to be continuing to grow except for the control and of course my eyebrow brush. 24 hours later. Okay, I also know that I haven't been growing the petri dishes in the ideal growth conditions, so I found an old electric blanket and I'm gonna try and just see if I can get any more growth out of these by setting it to kind of low and creating a warmer environment for the bacteria to grow. Eventually. Hey there, it's been seven days and I wanted to share with you the level of grossness that I've grown in these petri dishes. Now, I have gotten a little bit more more of a color scope than I thought we were originally going to get. There's like red, there's pink, there's different shades of white, there's a chartreuse yellowish type color. It's just not very appealing to think about putting on your face or to look at. So let's look at it. The eyebrow was the cleanest of them all. The blender and highlighter, blush brush, everything else was kind of the same. And I will share with you what my very intelligent pre-med cousin said to me. The white little dots are most likely the staph aureus and strep epidermis from skin flora. The multicolored dots may be more likely to be the contaminants like fungal strains from just incubating a strain on agar. But to really determine the colony identity, you would have to either grow it on a more selective media that say kills everything except staph aureus, etc., or do some other biochemical tests. So that is his very educated assessment of it. I need to do further testing to truly determine what exactly is growing on these things. However, I did buy this little camera a long time ago. Um, and even though Amazon says it's a microscope, it is not a microscope. It's just a camera that is able to zoom in more closely more macro level than say your iPhone camera or your cell phone camera. But I thought it'd be fun to take a look at what we've grown on our mediums with this guy. So let's let's see what that's like. One thing I will say is that I should have written, oh God, oh God, okay. <laughs> it's real gross. I, I should have written on the bottom of the Petri dishes instead of over the top because it's just like very like, I don't know, gross fungus nipple-like. Oh God, look at the texture on that. It's just like one is like a grotesque yellow nipple and the other is like a the top of a mushroom and um, neither of those are like super appealing. Yeah, and as you can see, as I was saying before, I wish I'd written on the bottom because you can see the camera gets like the, the text that I wrote over the top, but it's just like much goopier than I thought it would be. And I know that sounds a little silly. I'm looking up close at the blender right now, but I mean like, it's just so goopy. And like, there's our little red friend. Originally, I thought this little red friend here was similar to like the pink mold that you would find in your bathroom. The Serratia Mar Marcusens, Marcusens, I think it's called, but I, I have no idea what it is. I don't know, the little pink thing amuses, amuses me because I wasn't expecting to get so much color on these growths here. Ugh. Look how, I don't know, I don't like how like rubbery and shiny it looks. And it looks like a nipple. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Ugh, it's disgusting and wrinkly. I hate it, but I can't stop looking at it. And like, this one is like fuzzy and white. It's probably fungus, which is again, very great to think about putting on my face. But the one that looks most different just from eye level is this thing. I think it's probably another fungus here, but it's just like really like flaky looking. It looks like a big blob of earwax actually, not to be like disgusting about looking at mold and bacteria, but it looks like earwax and ugh, I don't know. It makes me, uh, I don't, I don't know. Like again, you're not like missing much cause it's like a lot of the same bacteria has been growing from the same places because I have one face. I, I know that might shock you, but yeah, a lot of the bacteria is the same. It's just, I don't know. It's just really gross. And I know I should be providing like more colorful 
freaking commentary, but like I just can't get over the the colors and the textures. Like, ugh. I don't know, man. Ugh. Just wash your makeup brushes, I guess. Ugh. Okay, so I'm not gonna bore you with footage of the same thing, but it is interesting to me that it's not gross when I'm looking at it in a petri dish like this. But the second that I bring a magnifier to it and I see all the cracks and crevices of what we've grown, it disgusts me. And I think I'm going to turn off the camera and wash my makeup brushes right after this. And I suggest that you do the same. Unfortunately, like my cousin and I have mentioned before, we can't tell the specific strains of fungus or bacteria Area that we've grown here without further testing. So take a look and if you're a microbiologist or you know someone who really enjoys fungus and knows these bacterial colonies or fungus colonies like the back of your hand and can identify them on site, please leave them in the comments below. I'm very curious to see what these are. But otherwise, thank you so very much for spending some part of your day with me and feel free to consider subscribing, liking, commenting, all that stuff, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Okay, as you're getting ready with me, you'll notice that I'm not a makeup guru. I don't really have a rhyme or reason for how I do things, but the main point of this video, and the most important point of this video, I need to wet this. Okay, hold on, I'll be right back.